Welcome back, <clears throat> everybody. My name is Grace, or Gibby, whatever you prefer. And today we're going up against the Mary Triggerous um, boss. Shout out to Anim. Gotta be one of my favorite developers. Not not picking favorites, but like, hey, listen. Just kidding. Anyways, video time. Anim makes challenge bosses. This is a Christmas themed challenge boss 2023, available at the house ID in the description. Uh, we're going to be taking him on, and there's a lot of ways to kill him, but his main mechanics are some random element SP attacks and um, 400 plus flat damage reductions. Every hit you do is greatly reduced in damage. He also hits for big numbers. So I'm running an FD Earth Armor with a defensive shield, Makalot Buckler. Um, I should be able to lower his damage a good amount. I'm also going to run Baby Egg or maybe the Babby Pet, just because. Uh, I think Warlick is not water, but we'll check because I don't really remember. We're going to run Bell Shell to help sustain and to reduce earth damage and the waterlogged tome. It's a water 100 proc, which max level is um, 140. But the thing about it is it's one of very few 100 procs, which um, always does one hit on its normal attack and on its 20 proc true special. Yeah, so this uh, Babby pet is not going to do it. That's not surprising. Didn't think it would. Um, but here comes his SP attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Malibu Twilly for some status resistance. This guest gives you status resistance based off endurance and charisma. And then we're also going to equip our Ice Misk because one of his SP attacks is an ice attack and a fire attack or a fire attack and an ice attack. But either way, the Misk will help. And then his other is an energy attack. And I picked an FD Earth Armor with good energy resistance, as you can see, so I'm not really worried about that. Also, this Misk will come in handy later, as you'll see. But let's see what he does. He does do the energy. Uh, he fries my SP bar, but um, no big deal. Didn't take that much damage. Dismiss the guest. Uh, reduce the Misk. Let's do two clicks. And back to Bell Shell. So pretty simple method. Um, what I did, I decided to spice up this uh, run by getting a pretty unique healing strategy, um, which you may have guessed if you looked at my inventory very closely. Um, but if not, it'll be a bit of a surprise to you, I think. Let's get Malibu Twilly back out here for some more status resistance. And this is pretty much the rotation. Oh, another energy attack. Um, the energy attack seems rarer than the fire and ice, but no real evidence for that. Just uh, some some testing here and there, like spot checking. Um, but we are going to start doing more and more damage with the ranged ramping. But you can see I was still doing like chip damage to him at the beginning of the fight, like 50, 100, 90. Um, so the ranged ramping doesn't like, it's not required for the kill, it just helps speed it up. Um, but I really wanted to showcase this one-hit strategy since there are a couple bosses where having a one-hit effect is better than having a multi-hit effect. And of course, this is one of them. No damage cap, um, etc. I think if I were tryharding against this boss, I would stack Paralyzed Potency and use... Ah, uh, so here's the Ice Attack, and it leaves you frozen. And then the Fire Attack does Thermal Shock. Now, I've actually never resisted either of these so i don't know if they're auto inflict or not um but i think you can resist them i just it's like a, a hard save because he's higher level than you and whatnot um but either way not that relevant it's getting to that time where i could use some healing but we'll wait another turn or two because there's no rush um but as i was saying there's a lot of ways to beat him if i were going to try hard i would stack paralyzed potency and use the queen's corgi pet since he has 180% water resistance, he would stack up stuns really fast. Um, and there's not much it can do against like Paralyzed Shield, Potency, and Spotter Drake. Maybe Necro Armor too. Um, and it loses Charisma and Luck Rolls really easily. So that pet would be, that guest, excuse me, would be pretty much, um, pretty much a, uh, a one and done way to beat the boss. But what I'm gonna do now is use Terror. be honest it was not supposed to resist that terror so we're gonna have to go back to bulk the uh 
turn of shame. But the plan is to inflict panic so I can use a specific item. Let's see if I have a mana restoration weapon. I don't. Do I have Fairy Godmother? I have Custom Zard. Negative energy resistance, though. Uh, I guess I'll have to drink a mana potion. That's embarrassing. Drink a mana potion to heal 100 MP. Never before seen tech. Um, but anyways, the plan is we go to Werepire. We have our potency shield and misc. So we have 40 panic potents. And we use terror. There we go. So now he's panicking. And this enables a um, rarely used strategy, which is the Fey Invocation Water Spell. Um, and you might not know exactly what it does, uh, but we also equip a healing resistance um, weapon and my status guest. Why not? Um, but Order of Terror and Horror gives me healing resistance and ice resistance for his SP attack. And uh, what I'm going to do is just cast Fey Invocation. Now this is a ranged water spell that triggers if the foe is panicked and turns into a healing spell with boosted output. Also, the healing spell scales off of enemy water resistance. So it's getting a fat 1.8 multiplier to deal with this triggerous damage that he's been outputting. So, with that being said, I can pretty much do whatever and go back to my um, method. I think I'm going to speed this up because the damage is coming in pretty slow. So you might see me skip to the end um, and then chat about the kill and what I might optimize and what I might not optimize. I'm a little tired of missing, so I'm gonna just use Robina twice. I can't be bothered. Um, I'm a busy man, I've got places to be. No, but it doesn't really change the fight, just speeds it up. And hey, crutching on ally assists is not a bad thing, necessarily. Okay. Back with the defense, Malibu Twilly. And we're still missing. You hate to see it. I guess that's that level 140 weapon in action, but whatever, like, two uh, accuracy is missing. There we go, the ramping's really kicking in now, so I'm doing, oh, forgot to put him on heal mode. The ramping is kicking in a little bit now, but that is what it is. I honestly, I kind of wish they'd remove ranged ramping so I could like do ranged builds that are slow and defensive and not worry about ramping, like delegitimizing the strategy, but hey, is what it is. I'm gonna drink a mana potion so I can, uh, get ready to use that panic healing strategy after this next SP attack sequence. I thought about uh, stacking more um, status resistance, um, but I figured it wasn't worth it because I'm not even sure if you can resist the statuses. So first I'd have to test that. Oh, well that answers that question. You can resist the statuses. Um, I think he only does the second SP attack if he gets the trigger with the freeze slash thermal shock. Uh, but either way, it won't do that much damage. Probably. Yeah, okay, so learn something new. Let's use another healing sequence. It should be close to a full heal because it's on a uh, it's on a trigger and it's multiplied by that huge water resistance. 
Now we'll even use Essence of Carnage to boost the spell damage by whatever, like 14%. Um, yeah, so let's go Macalot, Oath of Desire. You could go into a Spellcaster lean, but since I don't have Eternal Champion on me, I'm not going to bother. Because I take too much damage from the... Uh, from the next attack for it to be worth it. But yeah, there's my fat heal boosted by ramping as well. Um, there we go. Let's, all right, let's get back to it. Makalot Buckler, Waterlock Tome. Essence of Carnage is way too expensive to run all the time. Uh, at least in this like theoretical FD setup, but there we go. Yeah, so Fan Vacation, um, not like a i feel like the utility of needing to panic before it's a healing spell because i don't know if i explained it but if you don't um here i'll show you if you don't have panic it's just um just like a water damage spell i mean it does a lot of damage but that's because he has nearly 200 percent, and i've got a lot of ramping um stacked up so like it's not that the spell like actually does huge damage it's just that the situation gives it a lot of damage um but anyways the fact that you need panic i think does weaken it but the fact that we have a quick cast panic on werepire and werepire is a great sub race for what the hell was that huh Uh, before I go into this random SP attack, um, the fact that Werepire is great for a lot of ranger builds, and you get that quick cast panic, and we have so much panic bones, I think that makes it better. It is a healing spell, it scales off enemy resistance, so it will always be situational, but at the moment has some very strong uses. Okay, this used more SP than any of the other SP attacks, and it did at least one energy hit. See how it rolled two as it hits, but I can only see one. Um, at least one ice hit, at least one fire hit, at least one energy, at least so it was like seven hits. So it really got cucked by baby egg actually. Um, but hey, so he has a death attack or a near death attack. Who knew? Or just a very unlikely SP attack. Um, but there we go. That is my way to kill uh, the trigger S method with a defensive tank ranger with some unusual healing setups and defensive strategies as well as avoiding hit count instead of increasing hit count like is the normal matter for bosses i hope you found that interesting appreciate any comments ideas uh optimizations you guys have and i'll see you all later bye bye